Hey guys, so I got into uh, night vision about eight months ago now. Um, got my first PVS-14, you can see that here. Um, since then, I've gone through a carousel of different scope caps, lens covers, sacrificial lenses, lens filters, kind of clip-on devices, things like that. Um, talk about the pros and cons of each of them. What I've started with and kind of what I've uh, gravitated towards now and the setup that I currently use uh, with my 14 uh, when I go out hiking, shooting, stuff like that at night. To start, there's one piece missing here. Uh, that is my original daylight filter. Um, it's basically just a rubber scope cap that has a little hole punched in it. Um, that hole will allow a very small amount of light through so you can safely use uh, your night vision device in the daytime. It's also used to just protect uh, your objective lens. Your objective lens is towards the front, your ocular lens is towards the back. Both of these are threaded, so you can add different sacrificial lenses, lens covers, scope caps, things to that to keep these lenses protected. And if they have to take a hit, you want the sacrificial lenses or the lens caps, scope covers to take that hit. So uh, the most popular option and the one that I did first um, was the Butler Creek uh, scope caps. Uh, this one that I have isn't perfectly sized. I don't know if there's one that's better sized for a 14, um, but it'll slip over the objective lens. It doesn't stay on there that solid, so what I used to do was electrical tape around it two or three times. That would give it enough friction to stay on there. What I've done on this one is I've punched a hole in it just like on the daylight filter, so I can still use this in the daytime with the uh, scope cap on. It also works at night if I have uh, ample moonlight or supplemental illumination. It also works for just focusing things down because it shrinks the aperture so much. Um, so you can just flip that scope cap open and then you can use it at night. Uh, the only issue with this is that it makes uh, changing focus a little annoying because you got to deal with the... Um, but good solution. A lot of people use these. This is a very cheap solution. The default option for the ocular lens is uh, this uh, scope cap, the little mod that I've done here is just added Velcro onto it. Um, I used to just throw this into a pocket or into a bag, and I was kind of afraid of losing it, so I just threw some hook Velcro on there. Now I just stick this uh, to my helmet. I just take it off the ocular lens, stick it to my helmet, uh, never lose it. So still use that. I um, haven't really found a, a better solution. So basically a necessity is to put sacrificial lenses on both your ocular and your objective. Uh, in this case, this is one by NV Incorporated. Basically, any company that sells NV also makes their own sacrificial lenses. There's billions of them to pick from. Just find one that has good reviews. Um, so you can just thread that right onto the ocular lens. It'll stick out a little bit. So you got to just move your knot a little further on your mount. So just keep that in mind when you have this on there. But there you go. Your ocular lens is now protected. If you want a more fun option, Low Light Innovations makes these colored filters. This one is purple. Um, so what this one will do, since this is a green phosphor tube, it will block some of the green light that comes through. In your eye, uh, the image from the tube will look less green and closer to a white phosphor. It's not exact, but if the harsh greens from green phosphor uh, are irritating to your eye, if you're using this for a long period of time, some people swear by these. I think it's just more of a fun uh, gimmick, makes it look a lot nicer. The only thing to keep in mind with these is that uh, this is a filter, so it is blocking light. It's blocking some of the green light that's coming through. To your eye, you'll have less uh, light transmission. It might be a little harder to see things in moonless, wooded areas, stuff like that. Um, cool little filters, uh, nothing wrong with them. They make them in a lot of cool colors. It's really just personal preference. Now, what I've seen a lot of people doing recently is using some sort of adjustable iris. And we have an example of that here. The more popular one is the Tarsier Eclipse. You can find that one online. That is, I think, $250, uh, which is a total scam. You can get the same exact thing for a lot cheaper um, on eBay. If I can find the link, I'll put it in the description. Um, these are well-made. They're metal but this will thread right onto your... And now, you have an adjustable iris. The main issue here is that you no longer have a sacrificial lens on this, but that is where 
this piece comes in. You can get these on Amazon. This is a 37 millimeter sacrificial lens uh, that threads into the inner threads on this iris. So we can just take that second piece and thread that right onto the iris. So now we have a completely protected adjustable iris slash sacrificial lens setup. There's your Chinese Tarsier clips for like 60-ish dollars compared to 250. Literally the same functionality, um, just way cheaper. Obviously I can't take uh, full credit for this. This uh, solution has been around for a while. I think ever since the Tarsier clips came out, people have been kind of showing that you can get the same result for a lot cheaper. Now the main issue with this, because it's so much bigger in the front, it uh, doesn't allow you to use some of the other clip-ons. So if you're running like clip-on thermal, if you got that kind of money, uh, that might not work with this, but um, cheap stuff like this, this is like a an overlay magnetic compass. Um, that won't fit on here. That has to index on the actual focusing ring. But uh, that's pretty much it. That is the setup. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Pretty cheap way to protect your expensive equipment. Also gives you a lot of extra functionality with being able to open and close the aperture. Obviously you still have full normal focus range. So that's pretty much it. I might make a follow-up video showing what this actually looks like under NV and kind of showing you the difference between uh, fully opened and fully closed and uh, what the focus difference really is. Give an example of what that's like. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, see you in the next one.